What's going on guys? Chase on Two Wheels here and today we got another Here's Why for you and today we're talking beginner bikes. But we're not taking the regular route of talking about a Ninja 400 or that new MT-10 or MT-03 that just got released. We're taking a different perspective on it because as new riders, you guys probably have no clue what type of riding you want to do. So why wouldn't you want to start on a bike that can literally be ridden anywhere? Today, we're doing Here's Why Dual Sports are the best motorcycles to start on. Buckle up, Buttercup, because we're going off-road. Don't worry, I suck it off-road, so there's, there's not going to be too much. get too into this video let's talk real quick about the sponsor of the video and that's our wreck bike rebuild garage community over on patreon for as little as five dollars a month you guys can help us support not only our rebuild show where we're currently rebuilding three cbrs that we're going to be giving away once we're finished but that support also helps us make content like this so if you enjoy this content consider checking out the top link down below and supporting the garage over on patreon we really appreciate any of you guys that go check it out and are able to support now guys, before we get too far into this, we need to establish exactly what a dual sport is because there's probably some people out there that don't even know. A quick wiki search will tell us that, and I quote, a dual sport motorcycle is a type of street legal motorcycle that is designed for both on and off road use. Pretty simple, right? Some of the visual characteristics of these bikes will be the thin frame, slim seat, and wide handlebars. They mostly have square headlights and spoked wheels with a huge front fender and big forks. And trust me, all the OEMs have their own flavor of dual sport. Yamaha's got their WR250R. <clears throat> the X was uh, the best one ever made. But uh, regardless, Kawasaki has their KLX250. Suzuki has their very aged DRZ400S. And luckily for us, they have a little baby twin, the DR200. But hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? And don't forget, Honda's got their CRF250L. So now that we're caught up on what a dual sport is and what options we have out in the market, let's get into why we think they are the best bikes to start on. First up is size. They are the closest thing to a bicycle. If you guys are like me, while I was working my butt off to save up for my first motorcycle, I ended up buying a little road bike off Amazon to get used to riding on two wheels. Look, I know this sounds stupid, but I was a young man with a dream, okay? Dual sports are thin and upright, so the body position is going to allow the rider to feel like they have a ton of control. There are available models that don't have a ton of power, which means, as a beginner rider, you're able to control it without the worry of it getting away from you. Best of all, they are crazy light. Most dual sports come in less than 350 pounds, which is around 30 to 40 pounds less than their tiny sport counterparts like the R3. Many of you guys know I've owned a WR250X for years now, and I very often just pick the rear up and move the bike around whenever I'm in a tight situation. Noted, this is not a tight situation. That lightweight of these bikes is going to come in real handy if you end up dropping the bike. Let me just warn you guys when, and trust me, I mean when, not if, you drop a motorcycle, you get this rush of adrenaline, and in my experience, it's kinda crazy how that allows you to pick up a motorcycle that you would typically struggle with. You won't even need that rushing through your veins to get these up. And trust me, if you're riding this thing right, it should fall over. A lot. Speaking of that, guys, the next thing we have to talk about is with these dual sports, inevitably, they are going to hit the ground. Now, I can only personally vouch for my WR and that these things are absolute tanks, but I would imagine most other dual sports are the same. Regardless of what I throw at her, I pick her back up, turn her on, and she just keeps rolling. This makes dual sports amazing for beginner riders because that's something they always worry about. They don't want something to happen to their precious motorcycle if something happens and it accidentally kisses the ground. When you're riding a dual sport, you quickly realize these things are built not to just handle getting dropped, but they embrace it getting thrown down, picked back up, and continuing on. If you doubt me, let's just jump over to rockymountainatv.mc.com and scroll through the parts. 
When you notice this many items being made to protect the bike from getting trashed, that should be a hint that the people that are riding these things are doing some serious stuff. Getting tipped over is the least of their worries. I mean, look at this stuff. If you were wanting to build an apocalypse bike, these are the ones to do it with. Moving on, we have the fact that these things are, by definition, dual purpose, meaning you get more bang for your buck because you are able to ride them both on-road and off-road. Most beginner bikes aren't going to give you this level of versatility as you're going to get with a dual sport. This makes these bikes great if you're brand new to the two-wheel community and you might not know what type of riding you enjoy the most. On my channel, I personally get a ton of comments from people that say they have dirt bike experience, but they're looking into what bike they should start on because they've never ridden on road before. With these dual sports, you guys that are getting into riding and have some off-road experience can actually still enjoy riding off-road and maintain that capability of riding on-road as well. Something to note here, most dual sports come with basic tires that are meant to be used on and off-road, but unfortunately, they also typically are trash. And guys, once you get some experience under your belt and you decide what type of riding you really like doing, then you can swap those tires out for something more appropriate so you can really start taking advantage of that machine. Oh my good God. Now guys, before I start preaching about it, how great dual sports are off-road, I gotta be honest, clearly, I am not the one to ride this thing off-road. I absolutely suck at it. But here's the cool thing. You don't have to be good riding off-road to have a really good time with dual sports. It has never stopped my buddies and me from going out, doing stupid stuff off-road, and having a phenomenal time. Trust me. A perfect example of this is my buddy Yummy R6 and I used to ride WR250s all over the place. They're small bikes, neither of us really knew anything about what we were doing off-road, but to this day, riding around and exploring with him was some of the most fun I've ever had while I've been riding, and I've been riding for 10 years and have ridden all sorts of motorcycles. Hopefully you guys understand the potential that these bikes have. So earlier we discussed how rugged these bikes are and this is going to be really helpful for our next reason and that's the fact that these bikes are great for learning proper riding technique. People new to riding have a ton of things to learn and for those of you that have bad balance, these bikes are going to create a safer environment to learn those slow parking lot maneuvers without the worry that you may drop your beloved new bike and mess it up. The actual act of riding on the road really isn't that hard. Once you get going, you really don't have to worry about the clutch anymore. But the slow parking lot work actually takes a significant amount more practice. This is probably why you hear about new riders dropping their bikes in the dealership parking lot a lot of the time. Here's a tip. If you really suck at balancing and you can't get that worry out of your head, take your dual sport to an open grassy field or a dirt area. That way, if you do drop your bike over while practicing slow speed stuff, you will only fall over into dirt. Get up, dust off your bike, and carry on. Some of the techniques we suggest working on in these environments are weight transfer at slow speeds, precise clutch work, and counter steering. Which can be simplified down to one statement. If you push right, you go right, and if you push left, you go left. I don't want to go left, so I'm going to stay straight, and that's a red light. The lighter weight of these bikes should make them the easiest bikes on the market to practice this, but if your bike does get away from you and you do lay it down, remember, if you aren't dropping these things, you probably aren't trying hard enough. And guys, for the final reason why these bikes are amazing to start on, I can sum it up in one single word. Supermotos. So you guys are probably asking yourself, well Chase, what's the difference in a supermoto and a dual sport? Well, honestly, we could make an entire video on this topic, but if we're gonna boil it all down, it comes down to the wheels, the tires, and the suspension. What we're on right here is a 2020 Suzuki DR200S, I believe. This is a good example of an entry-level dual sport. And guys, this is a supermoto. This is my 2008 Yamaha WR250X. Yamaha only made them for a little while and they actually came straight from Yamaha in supermoto trim. But now you can only get the WR250R, which is the dual sport version. So no more supermoto straight from Yamaha. The reason supermoto is an entire reason for starting on these is that if you ever get to the point where you're getting bored of your bike, which happens very often in the beginner bike world, you can then do a few select mods and turn your dual sport into a street slang supermoto and now you've got a brand new bike.
This increases the longevity of the bike, and if you're like me, it'll become the motorcycle that will never leave your garage. I can't tell you guys how many times over the years I've considered selling my WR and every single time I'm about to pull the trigger and I decide I can't because I know how much fun potential it has. Riding a Supermoto around allows you to melt away all the problems that you typically worry about while you're riding. You don't want to ride too bad because you don't want to low side and ruin your motorcycle. Whereas on a Supermoto, you know in the back of your head, if something goes down and the bike's sliding across the ground, the bike is still going to be okay. A bike like this is going to allow you to enjoy the ride and not have to worry about all the stuff you typically worry about, like cars going or, you know, wheeling through an intersection that you don't know if a cop is there. Now, here's the point we gotta bring everything back down to earth. Everything we've been saying is true, but let's not gloss over the downsides of these dual sports. First off is the seat height. My vertically challenged peeps out there are gonna struggle here. These bikes are gonna typically have a taller than normal seat height at around 32 inches. A couple of good things here is that they do tend to sag quite a bit, meaning when the rider gets on the bike, the rear squats down a decent amount because of the softer suspension. And if that's not enough, I do know that a lot of these bikes offer lowering kits, though I would recommend not doing the lowering kits if you can get away with it. Another downfall is the lack of top speed and power going at high speeds. Basically, these things suck on the highway. It's just the truth. My WR is probably one of the worst bikes I've ever ridden on the highway, so because of that, I avoid the highway if at all possible while riding this thing. Now, if you're wanting to commute a lot, I would suggest looking into some touring mods specific to the bike you're looking to purchase. Other mods I would suggest are tires, like we talked about earlier. Those dual sport tires that come on these bikes do tend to cause a decent amount of vibration through the handlebars, which, if you're new to riding, may find uncomfortable. To help this, we suggest upgrading the grips and the bar ends, and an upgraded seat will help the vibration in the gluteus region. Finally, the fuel tanks tend to be slightly smaller, so you may even find yourself hitting the gas station more than you like. It should be also noted, again, mods can help fix this as many models have larger fuel tank options available. Basically, guys, what we're saying is pick up a dual sport and mod the hell out of it. So, guys, hopefully this video helps shed some light on the underutilized but massively multi-purpose use of a dual sport as a beginner bike. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more motorcycle content here on the Chase on Wheels YouTube channel. Now, keep this in mind. If you get a dual sport and you run out of mods for it, don't worry, there's a path forward. It's more comfy, it's more power, it's more utility, and it costs more money. But when you're ready for it, you might just be ready to be an ADV rider. And here's why. Oh shit, sorry, was going straight into a video. Uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more Chase on Two Wheels motorcycle content. We'll see you on the next one. Later. All right, Outdoor Crew, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to let us know if you guys have any ideas for other Here's Why videos. If we use them, we will uh, credit you guys in those videos. Love you guys a long time, and uh, I got to get this Super T back to Patty Rick. <laughs> Later, guys.